Welcome to our tools for Visual Studio. My name is John Lamb, and I'm going to be taking you on a tour of the features of this product. Our tools for Visual Studio, or RTVS for short, is a free download for Visual Studio 2015 Update 1 Community, Professional, or Enterprise. Let's go take a look. Let's download RTVS. We'll browse to http aka.ms/rtvs-current. This will download the RTVS installer that we can now run. Click on Install. Once RTVS is installed, we'll click on Close and you can see that we have opened the Getting Started page um, for you in your web browser. You can click on the documentation link here to get to our RTVS for Visual Studio documentation site. Let's launch RTVS for the first time. Let's click on the Visual Studio icon in the taskbar. And let's create a new project. We'll select the R project and Visual Studio creates a blank project for us with an empty R script file. It also launches the R interpreter and initializes the R interactive window. Let's type 3 plus 4 into this window to make sure that everything is running. RTVS works with whatever version of R that you happen to have installed on your machine. So in my case, I have Microsoft R Open 3.2.3 installed on my machine. Microsoft R Open is Microsoft's distribution of R, which contains two notable enhancements. The first enhancement is that it supports Intel's math kernel library, which greatly accelerates linear algebra computation on multiple cores on your machine. The second feature that it has is through the checkpoint library, it guarantees that the version of the R packages that your program was built against are always going to be available to users of your program in the future. Changing the version of R that you have installed on your machine is very straightforward as well. If you go to the options and you click on the R engine um, dialog, you can navigate to other R installations that you may have on your machine. So for example, if what I wanted to do was switch to Microsoft's R server product, which improves on top of the um, Microsoft R open product by adding libraries that support computations on data sets that don't fit in memory. When you change the path, you need to restart Visual Studio. in order to pick up the changes. If we reopen the project that we just had open before, we will see here that we are now running the Microsoft R server product. If you prefer to use CRAN R instead, switching that is just as easy. Go back to options, Click on our engine and go to Program Files, R, and select the version of R that you want to use. Of course, you need to restart Visual Studio once again. Reopen our project. And you can see that we are running CRANR. Next, let's take a look at the user interface of RTVS. We have already seen the R interactive window here before. I can type Z empty cars here to assign to the Z variable the empty cars um, built in um, data set. I can type stir Z to inspect the contents of it. Or I can go over here to Variable Explorer, and I can drill into the data inside of this data frame. Now, since this is a data frame, it's much more convenient to view it as a table. So I can click on the hourglass to bring up our table viewer, 
which I can drag out here and maximize. I can inspect its variables or its values, and I can drag it back over here um, into the side. Now, I also can get help at any time for any function that's um, um, built into R. So for example, I can type in question mark empty cars, which will open up a help window. I can, of course, once again, take this, maximize it. If I had a second monitor, I can even go off and drag it off to a second monitor. And of course, when I'm done with it, I can drag it back to where I found it before. Next, let's uh, take a look at plots. So plots are supported inside of um, RTVS as well. So I can type plot empty cars. That's going to generate a plot. And once again, I can drag it out and I can maximize it. And you'll notice here that when I maximize it, that we re-render the plot so that the plot is always rendered using all of the pixels that are currently available on the screen. I can do things like copy this bitmap um, to the clipboard. I can launch Word. And let's say I was writing a report, I can just simply go in and paste this bitmap into uh, my document. And then I'll take this back over here and redock it in the corner. We also have an R history window so that all of the commands that I've been issuing inside of my, se my, my session um, are stored inside of the R history. If I want to replay any of these commands, let's say I wanted to replay stir at Z, I can double click on this. We send the contents of it to the R interactive window, set the focus there, so all I have to do is press enter to execute the command again. The editor and the REPL in RTVS were designed to work together. Typically what you do is you type code into the editor and you execute code inside of the R interactive window. So let's type some code. Let's define a new function called add. And let's select all of the code in this function. We'll right click on the selection and we can select the execute and interactive command. And this will send the selection to the interactive window and execute the code there. Let's write another line of code which calls the function that we just wrote. And instead of selecting it, I'm just going to type control enter on this line. And that will simply send the current line or the current selection uh, to the interactive window for execution. Let's open up a slightly more complicated file inside of Solution Explorer. And you can see the real power of this you know, um, exploratory style of programming. So I can just walk up to a line like the first line of this, um, this file here, hit control enter, and I can immediately see it execute inside of the interactive window. I can use all of my existing tools. Like for example, I just read a CSV file into a local variable called airports. So I can now just use the features of RTVS to explore the data. I can continue on. I can run additional lines of code inside of here. I can even run the entire file inside of um, RTVS itself simply by right-clicking and selecting source R script from the pop-up menu. And this will take all of the lines of code inside of this file and send it to the R interpreter. Next, let's do a quick walkthrough of the debugger. We'll write a couple of functions inside of the editor window um, to show off the debugger. Function f1 returns x plus 1. Function f2 will be used to call function f1 and pass x plus 1 in as a parameter. Finally, we'll write some code to invoke the f2 function. Let's save the file, set a couple of breakpoints, and then attach the debugger to R. Once we've attached the debugger, the final thing that we have to do is source the file. That tells R to go off and run the code inside of this file. When we source the script, you'll see that we immediately stop execution at the call to F2. You can see here we have step into, step over, and step out commands. Let's step into the F2 function. You can see now that we have stopped execution. The value of X has been passed in as 42. We can see F2 is on the call stack. Continuing execution will stop us at the next breakpoint in the F1 function. You can see that we are stopped at F1, called from F2, 
and that the value of x is x plus 1. This is deferred execution in R. If we continue execution, you'll see that the result is displayed at the bottom, which is 44, as expected. RTVS also has the ability to create and edit R Markdown files. An R Markdown file is a file that contains a mixture of Markdown um, as well as R code snippets embedded inside of triple backticks that look like this block of code right here. When we edit an R Markdown file, it's just like any other file inside of the RTVS editor, I can control enter individual lines here and execute them inside of the REPL. So this library here, for example, the DT library will take some data. The data that I read in was a list of airports um, from around the world. I filtered it down to airports in the United States only and generated this table. This table supports interactive uh, incremental search. So for example, I can find all of the airports in Seattle simply by typing Seattle into this um, search box, or I can find all of the airports in New York by, by typing this into the search box as well. Um, I can tab through it. It's a very convenient way of visualizing large amounts of data in a tabular form as well as allowing me to interact with that data. Now this is an R Markdown document. So there's a bunch of other um, maps um, that are generated um, inside of this uh, document as well. So why don't we generate and run the whole thing by right-clicking, selecting Preview, and Preview HTML. This will generate, convert this R Markdown document into an HTML page, and then display it using the default browser. And so you can see the same interactive table that I had before is now embedded inside of this HTML page. So I can search for airports in Seattle. Here's a static map that was generated along with a code that was used to create it. And then down here below is a leaflet library, which is an interactive map of all the airports in the United States. And I can click on here to zoom in, or I can use my mouse wheel to zoom in further into um, this map. So it's really cool. We have the ability inside of RTVS to allow you to generate reports. And reports, of course, are you know, one of the staples of um, the, the outputs of a data scientist. On behalf of the RTVS team and Microsoft, thank you for your interest in our tools for Visual Studio. Please send us your feedback, either using the feedback tool built into RTVS itself or on the email address that you see on the screen.